Have you ever found yourself spending weeks and months pouring your energy to build a product? You have gone from sprint to sprint to define, design, code, test, and revise. But come launch day, your product didn't quite make the impact that you were hoping for. Your customers are not finding it interesting. They are not using it like you intended. It makes you wonder, how do the popular products figure it out? How do the successful products like Gmail, Instagram, Apple figure it out? How do they know what the people want? The answer is research. Good old research. Big tech companies typically have researchers who empower these companies to anticipate needs, foresee changes, and offer a clear vision for the roadmap. I know what you must be thinking. My company will not hire a researcher anytime soon. Don't worry, I've got you. In my product journey of working with startups, Fortune 500 companies, and even the government, I have found some workarounds to navigate the lack of formal research and still stay connected with customer needs. And today I'm here to spill the beans. I'm going to share with you three secrets to the user research without a dedicated user research team. Understanding why most teams do not have a research unit. Before we get into the secrets, let's discuss why most teams do not have a research unit. They subconsciously know that having a researcher focused exclusively on learning about the evolving market needs, knowing whether your product roadmap reflects those needs, will help. You know it, everyone knows it. Then why having researchers is an exception, not the norm? Well, the top reason why companies don't have researchers on board is fuzzy attribution. Let me explain. It is really hard to attribute the business outcome, like revenue and profit, directly to research efforts. In an ideal world, we could say, invest X dollars in user research and watch your profit skyrocket by Y. But in reality, it is really trick to pinpoint the precise business impact of user research. So when budgets are reviewed, especially when compared to other units like software development, product management, marketing, the question often comes down to this. Can we deliver the project without user research? And the answer is often yes. So research can feel optional. Next, we have the access challenge. Some teams genuinely want to conduct user research, but cannot due to limited user access to the user base. This is particularly prevalent in B2B scenarios where users are not easily reachable or in tightly regulated industries like healthcare, where user interactions are highly constrained. The third main reason why researchers are not that common in companies is resources, which is the time and cost that needs to get invested to do research. Traditional user research is an intricate process it involves interviews, discoveries, surveys, and so much more. The amount of planning, conducting, and analysis that is required from research can be overwhelming. For teams that are fast-paced, resources are in short supply. Uh, research is also a financial commitment, particularly when you are uh, asking users to lend their time in exchange for money. It can get very expensive very quickly, so companies aren't sure whether research is even worth it. But teams that do not have research end up making decisions based on hunches. Oh, hunches of teammates with the loudest voices. The inevitable outcome is a product that doesn't quite hit the mark. Now on to the part you've been waiting for, the solution. I have three solutions that I have discovered to conduct scrappy research. These cost-effective strategies will help your team make well-informed, user-centric decisions without the typical commitments of traditional research. Secret number one, creating a user mindful culture. My first secret is a mindset that I like to call user mindful. User mindfulness is the constant awareness of users' needs and desires. This isn't about a formal training or hiring an army of researchers, but instilling a mindset of user mindfulness within your team. It's about developing a culture where every team member, from customer support to product owners to back-end engineers to front-end engineers, everyone harbors a continuous awareness of users' needs and desires. Note that I don't say user-centric because we can't expect everyone to know everything about users or be always uh, aligned to those, but user mindfulness is an idea that 
all team members while making micro decisions in their everyday work are able to stop and think that, hey, between these two options, which is more helpful for my user? And that's the one I choose. The more you encourage your team to step into the shoes of the user, the more your product outcomes will improve. Let's break down some practical ways to create a user mindful culture. First is customer conversation. Encourage every team member to speak with at least one potential customer every quarter. So that's just one hour every three months. <laughs> this simple action can help put a face to the abstract concept of user and it can influence so many micro decisions in the user's favor. With every team member bringing different customer perspectives into the fold, you are bound to get a more richer, more nuanced understanding of your users. Then we have user-centric questions. No matter what your role is within the company, you can make it a habit of asking questions about the user during routine team discussions. It's a stand-up talk, ask questions like, uh, how will they interact with this feature? Uh, what are they using when they're not using our solution? Between uh, potential feature A, potential feature B, which one will impact the user's life more? These questions may be even a little bit annoying at first, but they instill a customer consciousness over time. Conflict resolution through a user point of view. When internal conflicts arise between two team members about potential product roadmap, consider resolving them from a user's perspective. Try to seek publicly available data or ask team members who have been speaking to customers and resolve them from the customer angle. Conflicts can be heated moments, but they can also be breeding ground for a powerful cultural shift where your teams can at least agree that they're all headed towards a common goal, helping the user. This helps depersonalize the argument and the team gets into the habit of thinking from the customer's point of view. Secret number two, using alternate research methods. Diving into our second solution, let's explore the art and science of alternative research methods. These methods do not require the resources needed for formal research. Alternative user research number one, Harness in-house experts. Many companies overlook the power of in-house knowledge. You have a wealth of insight right under your nose. Many people in your company do have a regular touch base with your customers and they understand your users more than anybody else. Now, let me give you some examples. People from your sales team, people from customer support, they have a deep understanding of your customers' needs, pain points, because they are connected to the customers every single day. Mm. Customer support representatives know the ins and outs of customer pain points. They know how the customer think when they call for help. Your sales team knows why customers churn uh, or why they prefer your competitors. Think about it. Who better to understand your customer needs and your product limitations better than the people who interact with both every day. So my challenge for you, make it a ritual. Make it a monthly ritual to learn from your frontliners. They have so much knowledge that can be used not just for firefighting, but for actual proactive planning. They can tell you about the competitor's strength like nobody else. So don't hesitate to mine the school mine of inherent uh, research insights by asking questions, requesting past reports, analysis, maybe customer complaint log. Their experience, their hands-on experience can be even more valuable than formal research. Alternative research method number two, spy on competitors. Okay, not literally spy, but keep an eye out on what your competitors are up to. Try to learn from established market leaders to understand how did they get established? What makes them the current leader? And whether your team can display similar methods of success by understanding market leaders, you get clues about their tried and tested strategies. You can also learn from some of their mistakes and either avoid them or try them with your own angle for a better outcome. From new and innovative competitors, learn about their outlook and their approach to understand their bets uh, on the upcoming market. You can invest in industry reports, reports from consulting leaders like Gartner, Forrester. They may come at a smaller cost than a real research team and that can give you a valuable insight into what's working for others and what isn't. It can also help you anticipate user needs and even validate some of your product ideas. A regular competitive research 
can be done without researchers and it is relatively easier to find. Alternative research method number three, embrace guerrilla research. Guerrilla research is a quick and budget-friendly way to gain user insights. This could be a simple usability test with friends or colleagues or a quick online survey after a short screening process. It is fast, it is uh, inexpensive, and it's still a very effective way to get your hands on actionable insights. Alternative research method number four, make the most of everyday tools. Tools like Slack, polls, LinkedIn polls, Reddit polls, Facebook discussion, can help you get a quick pulse in the market at minimal time and cost. These methods can provide quick feedback, enhance your team's understanding of the user behavior. These can help you learn about people's perspective of your product, how they use them, and how to think about their problems that your product solves. Not just the solutions, but the actual problems. These tools are cost-effective and user-friendly and can reach a wide audience. In the past, I've used a Reddit sample size to get some free input on some of my work. Well-designed polls can bring substantial user insights. People who respond to polls sometimes even volunteer to talk to you in greater depth about, uh, about your product, and they can be potential testers or even customers because you've already roped them in with your awesome poll. Alternate research method number five is leverage AI. Use AI as your co-pilot for research. At this point, if you're not using AI to actively brainstorm customer needs, you are missing out. Tools like OpenAI's ChatGPT or Google's Bard can be your best friend in your research efforts on a budget. These tools can help you role-play your ideal customer. You can understand customer behaviors, their preferences. You can even find old research studies that you may have missed so far. It is a powerful way to gather user insights quickly and so cost effective. You can file old statistics, old research patterns. You can ask questions about markets, your customers. Note that AI is still pretty new and there are documented answers that ChatGPT gives incorrectly. So take it all with a grain of salt. But in my experience, discussing some of my theories uh, with AI along with a second form of validation, especially when it comes to numbers and data, it really improves my strategic thinking a lot. With these alternative research methods, you can overcome many of the traditional uh, constraints associated with user research, and you can continue to gather important insights that can guide your product decisions. Every bit of insight you gain, no matter how small, can lead to better product decisions that can drastically improve the user experience and ultimately your product success. Secret number three, cultivating a culture of sharing. Let's transition in our, into our third and probably the most powerful solution, fostering a culture of sharing stories. While cold hard numbers might offer clarity, it's the stories that tingle the fires. They hit the heartstrings and they set the stage for transformational action. Here's how you can use storytelling to encourage user awareness. Open a channel of shared insights Use everyday tools like Slack channel on your workspace to share stories from the market or from potential users. Think of things like Wall Street Journal article in your domain, uh, a tweet describing a potential user's frustration, a funny comic that highlights your market's unmet needs. All of these can really help your team passively become aware of market and users. This influences their perception of users as not just data point or digital persona, but actual people with lives. Leverage the power of stories over data. Yes, formal research will tell you precisely the usage patterns, user statistics, market projections, but to truly connect with your user base, you'll need stories. Let's say your company makes a digital real estate marketplace. Consider this made of statistics. 33% of homeowners wait over six weeks between finalizing paperwork and physically owning their house. Now, delve into Jim's tale. A hopeful homeowner, paperwork all sorted, staring longingly at his dream home, is barren from entering his new house thanks to the frustrating bureaucratic delays in homeowner paperwork. The second one sounds so much better, right? It makes your team wonder, what is holding Jim back? How can our product help address his pain points? It's more than just data, it's an emotional journey. So as you think of research, don't just go after collecting data. 
because it's difficult too. But also when you listen and narrate the right stories, you wield the power to transform these stories into stepping stones for a product that doesn't just solve problems, but touches lives. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. Do you have a favorite non-research research method? Let me know in the comments. I'm Deethi, your product bestie. And on this channel, I discuss tech, design, and market fit. If you'd like to see more content like this, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and I hope to see you next time.